So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I was given only 15 minutes, so there will be no room for, uh, for questions. However, I will be more than happy to engage during the coffee break or during somebody else's presentation. My name is Jakub Vanek. I'm coming from Jimpact, where I'm responsible for a Polish and Slovakia business. First of all, I would like to thank you for organizing such event. It's very nice and interesting. And secondly, I would like to thank for giving us an opportunity to contribute with a topic we find relevant to share with. Uh, my speech is going to be about data and the impact on the future. Uh, why? We are currently living in the fourth technological generation or revolution, where everything is super quick. We need to adapt. We all see the discussions about the digital. And the matter of fact is that we all need to earn our space on Earth. Animals, plants, humans, we need to adapt. We need to change. And why? Because survival is not mandatory. So the same way roses have thorns, the same way lions eat first, the same way we need to adjust ourselves, and it's also applicable in the business. That's why I have a table of biggest organization in 2008 and 2018. I used market capitalization, however you can use whatever you want, the revenues, number of employees, profit, doesn't matter. The matter of fact is that it completely changed within just 10 years. While 10 years is not a big distance, right? I still consider myself looking the same like 10 years ago. Uh, and there are currently predictions that 75% of the Fortune 500 organizations will change within the next 10 years. What does it say? Or what is the next successful organization? How to define it? Because we completely moved away from the, from the setup where if you have the best product, you are the most successful organization. I Like example, I'm using iPhone. Probably it's not the best phone ever. At least this is what IT department keeps saying, saying me. But Apple is still in the top three most earning organizations in the world. The same can apply for Starbucks as a very successful coffee chain. Again, especially Italian folks will tell you that this is not the best coffee ever. So there is something with the customer experience. However, the second important element is, how are you able to predict what customer wants tomorrow? In six months, what is the economical situation impacting you or the political situation impacting you like Harley Davidson nowadays. This iconic brand and the issues going through right now with all these US slash EU tariffs and the impact on the business. So that's what also we in Genpact are trying to support organizations with. How to get from the ecosystem relevant information and from those information quickly get some insights to make a decisions to somehow maneuver in this dynamic environment. Probably, I will now pause myself for a second and let's, let's play the video. Progress is elusive, which means sometimes its opportunities are elusive too. So sometimes you need a company with an entirely different perspective. A company that understands their clients' operations, that thinks with design, that dives deep into data and dreams in digital. A company with the experience to connect every dot reimagine every process, and rethink business as usual. At Genpact, digital transformation isn't a series of buzzwords. It's why we're here. We're driven by an endless curiosity, obsessed with finding the fastest path to real-world results, putting people first and outcomes at the center. We're not just thought leaders. We're doers, rolling up our sleeves, staying agile, because there is no one-size-fits-all to what we do. We transform businesses and deliver bold, lasting progress. Genpact. Transformation happens here. Talking about the data set. This is the data set which is completely irrelevant. It's something about our organization, it doesn't matter. What matters is that in Krakow we have two sites, approximately 450 people. Please treat it as an invitation to come and see what we do and how we do it. So that's, that's just a quick one. If I want 
to leave you with something. It would be like the three recommendations if you want to start your journey with data mining and uh, analytics prediction, also coming based on our learnings. The first one, the most important, get your data right. Here, more than ever, the rule is the garbage in, garbage out. If you have your data incomplete, adjust it, any certain bias, then your insights, your predictions, your business decisions will be wrong, and then everything is just pointless. The second important element is build models based on the idea. Don't first start with the data, trying to see what the data will tell you. You will be just shooting in the dark, and you will lose time, you will lose resources. Always first come with either idea, aspiration, business challenge, whatever, and then collect the data accordingly, and then just go deep. And the second, and this is basically our failure in the beginning, create a model which is not too complex. If you create a model with hundreds of predictions, hundreds of assumptions and independencies, etc., first of all, nobody will understand, and secondly, it will be com completely theoretical and disconnected from, uh, from the reality. The last one, however, crucial. Please onboard your final stakeholders, whoever it is, directors, VPs, board, etc. The worst thing that can happen is the fact that you have some good insights, you come to your board with that insights, and then the board will completely decline it because of, it doesn't seem right, I don't think this is correct, I run this business for 40 years, so I know much better that we need to go to the right, despite the fact that data is telling me to go to the left. Uh, and if you onboard the organization completely, then of course you can create a complete continuity of that process. And then you can start building all the fancy stuff based on the data, using artificial intelligence, using the predictive model and simulation, using the machine learning on continuity basis, because that's when the value comes. Like example what we did in our organization two years ago. We tried, uh, in the end we did it, we tried to build a model to predict who is the next person to leave. Meaning if you have a team of 100, who from that 100 will submit the resignation tomorrow? For all the reasons which we know about. You lose the knowledge, you have the issues, blah, blah, blah. We collected the data point of our staff consisting of 35 items. Hard data as well as the soft data. Hard data, what's the age, what's the distance commuting to the office, what's the salary, when was the last promotion, uh, what is the university background connected with the fact, uh, with the role which I currently do, etc. And then with the soft data, like what is the atmosphere within the team, what is assumed relationship with the manager, what is the current stressful situation, seasonality, etc. And we were filling all those data for several months, and after approximately one year, we reached a stage where this predictive analysis is able to tell us with 80% accuracy who is the next one to leave, which is much higher than our managers. And uh, to use, so, sorry, I was moving it in my pocket completely wrong. I would like to use some real example from the business. The first one is with uh, aerospace industry. The, uh, I cannot tell the name, however, there are only two organizations in the world, so try to guess, 50% you will be right. Uh, in this aerospace industry, apart from the standard services, what we do also is we are collecting the data of the engine during the flight. Data like consumptions, reaction to the quality of the air, any hiccups during the flight, utilization, speed, etc., etc., hundreds of data points. And based on this, we created the model to predict when the proactive maintenance needs to happen. Proactive maintenance in order to prevent the damage or some brokerage of any, any piece in the, uh, in, the, in the engine. The business impact is very visible. First of all, it's the cost, because the Proactive maintenance is costly like 10% of the reactive repair. And uh, the second one is it's much quicker, meaning you don't have to have your plane in the garage for long and it can still generate the revenue and top line, etc., etc. So this is what you can get from the data. This is what you can really 
So what can move you ahead of the competition? And uh, the second one, which I would like to use, is, is uh, the Formula E. I'm not sure if somebody knows what Formula E is. Any guesses? Yes. It's the same like Formula One, just instead of the fuel, you have a battery. So electric cars, the futuristic cars. So we started last year our partnership with Envision Virgin Racing Team. And uh, what we do, because the rules are slightly different than the standard formula, where in formula it's just about the distance and who finished the first one. Here, the rules of Formula E are slightly different. The race is only 45 minutes, and there are several aspects. The distance, but also how much of energy you consume, how much of the battery is still left. There is also some kind of a fence voting taking into, uh, taking into picture. So pretty much there are several criteria to define the winner. It's not just about the speed. And what we do with them is during the race, and of course after that as well, analyzing the current conditions, the current situations to impact all those key metrics. Like, if the weather is so cold, the impact of the battery is visible, right? The battery will go away much quicker. Or if the driver is braking too much, again, unlikely in the standard formula, it consumes a lot of battery energy. So all those things we are driving during the race and analyzing and giving right away instructions to the pilot. Last race, which happened uh, in April in Paris, our team won. Next, next race is in, uh, in uh, Berlin this month, so let's hope we will be successful as well. So I think it's time for the second video. Strategy, preparation, instinct, mind, body, team, working as one. Lightning fast decisions, attack, outmaneuver, overtake. Predict, act, learn, adapt. Instinctively. Every encounter making me smarter and stronger. Fractions of a second, the difference between winning and losing. This is survival of the fittest. This is instinctive racing. This is also where we learn currently, how to make those decisions quickly. So that's all from my side. Any questions? Because I'm still having two minutes. Okay, I hoped at least one, but it's fine. Uh, during any break, feel free to come uh, as well, please. You are welcome to come to our Krakow office. And now I'm passing my voice to Jarek from Motorola Solutions. Thank you for attention.